Okay, so Giacomo Costa inspired image. I'm going to use this image as my uh, base image, um, mainly because it's got some foreground, uh, which is um, similar to most of Giacomo Costa's images. Um, they also have a foreground as well. Um, I'm going to copy and paste in additional buildings, all of which will appear to um, come from behind the existing buildings. Um, in order to give myself a little bit of extra working space, I'm also going to use my crop tool, set my background colour to white, and I'm actually just going to crop it a little bit bigger, just so that I've got some extra space to work into. Um, at this stage, um, what I really want to do is add new layers. Um, the only problem is, by adding blank layers, um, I'm not actually being able to add uh, any buildings. So what I would actually do is now open a different image. I'm going to use my selection tools to select the buildings that I would like to copy. Um, at this point, remember that you can switch between selection tools. Um, if you want to tidy up um, your selected area, you'll see here, I've gone a little bit too far here. The bottom's not really neat, so I've got a little bit too far here. So I'm also going to use my polygon lasso set to subtract from selection so that I can literally just tidy up the area and you can see there that then what I do is I'm actually areas that are currently selected actually become deselected and it just tidies up the uh, the area that I'm going to copy like so oh, I missed a bit so let's just Go to add to selection. So I missed a little bit there, and this time I'm just going to add this bit in. There you go, so it's a bit neater. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to go edit copy or command C if you're on a Mac, control C if you are on a PC, and then I'm going to go edit paste uh, or control V if you're on a Mac or uh, sorry, control V if you're on a PC, command V if you're on a Mac. So first of all, you can see that actually what's happened now is it's added this building on. It's added it onto a separate layer. And the nice thing about it being on a separate layer is I can move it around independently of um, the, the background image. If I do command T or control T if you're on a PC, uh, then I can also change the, sh the, the size of it. I can change the, the rotation of it and I can change the position of it as well. Um, if I put this here, for example, so if we assume what I've actually done now is place the building where I want it, um, the big problem I've got now is that rather than appear to come from behind this uh, building in the main picture, it seems to hover in the air coming uh, from in front of it. So in order to, um, to overcome that and to make it look like it comes from behind, and this is the main tool that you're going to use or the main action that you're going to repeat over and over again. So easiest thing to do is I'm going to temporarily turn this additional layer off by unclicking the eye and I'm going to click off the layer onto the background layer. Once I've done that, I'm going to use one of my selection tools to just select the building which should be in front of that additional building. So you can see I've got this bit selected here. Once I've done that, I can go back to my, my new layer and turn it on. It's very, very important that you actually make sure that you are clicked onto the layer in question. Now, don't forget, whenever you've got anything selected, um, that any action that you carry out will only affect the selected area. On this particular layer here, the, uh, my, my new layer, the only thing that's on that is the building, and the only part of the building that's inside the selected area is this bit here. So, therefore, if I was to press delete now, what will happen is the bit that's inside the selected area will disappear, and once I deselect it, you can see that my building now appears to come from behind the, the, the image in the foreground. So let's continue that again. Let's do another one. Um, so this time, let's choose uh, this image or this part of this building here, uh, like so. Um, I'm just going to quickly 
tidy it up. Like so. We don't need the whole thing. Um, let's just do the bottom bit as well. Okay, like so. And then I am going to go edit, copy. I'm going to go to my new, uh, my original thing and edit, paste. And you can see I've now got a new building on there. And once again, it's on its own separate layer. So again, if I press Command T, I can change the shape of it. I can change the size of it, change the angle of it. Um, so if I was to now put that there. So what we're going to do is repeat the exact same process. The only difference this time is that in addition to appearing to come from behind this building, it should appear to come from behind uh, the second image that I put on the church tower, if you like. So in order to do that, the same process. So on my layers panel, I'm going to turn off that new image temporarily, and I'm going to click on to my background layer. And then I'm going to use my selection tools to select the bit of building that is relevant, like so. Now I can go back to my new layer and turn it on, remembering to make sure I'm clicked on the layer. And if I press it, delete, that part of the building disappears. Now my only problem now is it doesn't come from behind the church tower. So I'm going to repeat the process again. So I'll turn this layer off. This time, however, I'm going to click back onto my second layer, the one with this church tower on. And then I'm going to use my selection tool to select the church tower. Oops, excuse me. Just like the church tower. And now I can go back onto my new layer, turn it back on, and, it, and you can see that there's this bit of the building is in the uh, uh, selected area. So if I press delete, it now appears to come from behind that church tower. So I've now got two buildings added uh, that appear to come one from behind the other. And if we use this third building, uh, let's just use the top part of it. So, uh, let's just deselect part of it. Like so. So edit, copy. We'll go to this one. Edit, paste. Command T. Let's put it here. So, and I've got another, yet another new layer. And once again, I'm going to turn that off. Now you'll notice this time it doesn't go behind the, uh, the, the image in the foreground. So I don't need to do anything with this bottom layer. But it does go behind both of these other two. So I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to down, go down to layer one, which is the church tower image. I'm going to select the church tower, like so, like so. I'm going to go back to my new layer and press delete. Remember to deselect. And then again, I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to go down to my second layer, the one with this sort of golden um, colored image on it. Remember to click onto the layer. I'm going to select the building, like so. I'm going to go back to my new layer, turn it back on, press delete. And what you can see now is I've got this third building that's now been added. And what I would actually do is repeat this process in this entire area. Um, essentially, you're repeating the same thing over and over again, which is to select an image, copy it and paste it into this image. And then you're going to go from layer to layer, selecting and deleting. Um, so that your images look like they come one behind the other. The key thing is you must remember to make sure that you are clicking onto 
the layer that you actually want to be working on, whether that's selecting or, de or de uh, deleting part of the image, and then you build that up. And then once you're done, if you've got too much uh, white left in it, uh, then of course you can crop that out. Press OK, and then you can actually use your blue and your paintbrush or your clone tool to actually fill in the sky in this area here. And that's essentially your Giacomo Costa inspired image, obviously in your case with a lot more buildings added to it. Okay, hope that makes sense. Bye.